So a lot of kids grow up wanting to be superheroes. That like me, I love superheroes. I'm 37, I still wanna be one. Um, at 11 years old, our next guest is officially a superhero, y'all. <laughs> he is part of a brand new series called Marvel's Hero Project on Disney Plus, which shines a light on real life superhero kids. Take a look. Elijah, he has such a light inside of him. And yes, I'm a kid, but kids do have a voice. One thing I love is to be able to feel like I made a difference. We were sitting on the couch and he said to me, I'm gonna lead a march. Today I make a call for peace. I'm not asking for it, but I'm having it and I'm taking it. He is a ray of sunshine. Oh my God. Please welcome Elijah, y'all. To four kids, and I'm so proud of you, and you didn't even come from my womb. I love you. <laughs> like, just to see, like, young people in that zone, like, speaking freely and openly from their heart without any agenda, no one's in their back pocket, like, nothing's happening except real, honest feelings. That is what we need. That is what we need. So, meet Patty and Sam and Aaron. Hi, Hi sweetie. Yes. So, We're so, very proud of you. Oh, my Thank gosh. You. Thank so you. proud. So, you've been named a Marvel superhero. So, what exactly does that mean? Well, one, it's an honor. It's a true honor oh. to be seen as a superhero. Amen. Compared to people like Spider Man. To see as a superhero by people like Spider Man, that's truly amazing. Yeah. That's an honor. Yes. Being a part of the Marvel Hero Project, that symbolized that I was accomplishing something and that I am making a difference. And I believe that that is what I truly fight for in my life. I believe that that is somewhat my purpose. Ooh. And I believe that's, that's not just me, but that's with every kid on the Marvel Hero Project. Who that, are you? <laughs> Keep going. Is that I believe that the Marvel Hero Project is basically a group of kids who fight every day to make this world a better place. Not just for us and not just for our our adults, but also for our younger generations. And again, I am honored to be a part of this Marvel Hero Project. Totally crying, I'm fine. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to adopt you, I love you. <laughs> um, uh, is this your comic book that you got? Yeah. Okay. So, I was immediately surprised with the comic book and the whole thing, just because I'm one of those comic book nerds. <laughs> um, yeah. I collect comics, it's probably something that I am obsessed with, which yeah. is good and bad. Um, I'm that group, I'm that kid in that group that's like, I'm a nerd, but I'm also I am that too. good nerd. Hey, nerds so, make it. Yeah, exactly. Nerds make it. Exactly. I'm just saying. Exactly. Yeah. Watch out for those nerds. Yeah. We're going to conquer it. But my comic, it, the cover of it, it just really meant a lot to me. Yeah. And to see the fact is that I take a lot of pride in being biracial. Being biracial is something that means a whole lot to me. And so the fact that they made sure that my skin tone was on point, that I had that fade, that, made a lot, that meant a lot to me. Just because my color means a lot to me, and I fight for that type of stuff. I fight for race equality, and I fight for that type of stuff. And the fact is that they included that, that's phenomenal to me. Yes, I'm so moved by you right now. I can't even talk. You are so powerful. Thank you. How did you get involved um, for speaking up for abused children? I actually had a classmate of mine experience abuse. And I was pretty young still. And I didn't know exactly what to do in that moment. But I was able to tell them that to get help. And they got help. And, but that stuck with me. That put a burden on my heart to say, well, I know it's just not this one kid. I know that there are who knows, thousands at least, of other kids going through this abuse, and that's not okay with me. And so, as I get older, I learn more about the power of marching and the power of using your voice to people like Angela Davis and John Lewis and Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. I learned that there is power in your voice, and even if you're a kid. And so, I started using my voice to fight against child abuse and to say, as a younger generation, as a community that we are, we will no longer sit silent to the oppression of our young it. people. Exactly, we won't accept it any longer. Because in my eyes, we have already accepted it too long. There are already too many people who are scared and afraid, and there are already too many kids who are actually dying. And the fact is that we need to make a change. <laughs> okay. Because if we want our country, and I believe that if we want our country to get better, 
it starts oh, with our do, young people. Oh, we do, Elijah. It really does start with our young people. We, it starts with our young people being raised up. And I have a quote that says, when one falls, we all fall. But when one rises, we all rise. And so in my eyes, us helping our young people is a way that we will all rise. Oh, my God. Yeah. What is happening? You better talk to a tough boy. What is happening? So, Patty, I know that you've been following Elijah, right? Yes. I, I've, I've watched you, and I love who you are. Thank You're you. our future. You know, most people have to give kids a voice like yours, and I'm so proud of you, honey. You. You're a bad little boy. <laughs> you are so good. Oh my gosh, I just hope that you set off just such an amazing domino effect. I mean, you, have, you are such a light. Thank and you. to inspire other kids to be that kind of light and that kind of bold when you really want to stand up for yourself is such an inspiring thing. It's such an amazing thing to do at such a young age, young man. Thank you. Wow, I'm so blown away by you, Elijah. I cannot wait to see what you do with your future. Thank you. Actually, we have your mama in the audience, Jessica. You must be so proud. I am, I'm extremely proud. Elijah's dedication to just making the world better, it's built in him. Um, he has every reason to have excuses. Um, when Elijah was three, his dad died of a massive heart attack, very unexpectedly. You know, you just never know how things are gonna unfold after that. Yeah. And I think because of his faith, and I think because of his purpose, um, it's only strengthened him. His resilience is amazing. Um, I've never heard him feel sorry for himself. If anything, he knows that he has to be an example because there are other children who are fatherless. There are days where I wish he would rest, um, yeah. you know? There are days where I'm like, okay, can we just sit it down for a minute and yeah. could you go and, you know? Be a kid? Yes, uh-huh, yeah. let me sleep or rest. Yeah. Um, but I also am so grateful for who he is and his heart yeah. and um, how he pushes. And can I tell you, like, he didn't just arrive just like this. Like, you have to have an awesome mama to end up like this. Like, yeah. you have to be an incredible mother. I am just, I am just blown away by Ooh, you. Thanks. Like, out of every guest I've ever had on this show, you have, like, broken my heart in the best way possible. Thank like, you. you are so beautiful. So you have lots of upcoming plans, right? Definitely. Yeah, you're keeping the efforts going. How are you doing that? I am working on my third annual Try to Boost Awareness March. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be March 2020, March 7th. And I am extremely excited about that. Yeah. We're hoping to get, like, 300 people out, if yeah. possible. Yeah. And um, the big thing about my marches is that I want other kids to come so that they realize that you do have a voice in the situation. And also, I love it when kids and families make posters, just because I believe that making posters almost force you to have a conversation. Because eventually that child will ask, why are we making posters? <laughs> and so, if it's to the point where those children ask... How do you know that? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> what in the world? God is like, put oh. his hand on you. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> wow! And you also have a room for kids, right? Yeah, so I'm also working on a hot, we call it the pediatric safe room. And it's in my local hospital where we are dedicating rooms to helping our young people who have gone through traumatic events, who have experienced abuse, just because that is really hard. Mm -hmm. And after they go to the, after they literally seen their parents dragged away in handcuffs, they immediately have to go to the hospital room wait in this very, very dull, grim hospital room. And we all know that there is nothing fun about being in a hospital room. How do you know that? <laughs> and it's just, um, also, if I would have had that type of room when I lost my father, yeah. I think it would have definitely made an impact on that experience for me. Yeah. And so I want to create a room where there's light colors on the wall and there's toys and there's games and there's TVs where kids can actually enjoy themselves for a minute. Bit of escapism. Exactly. And I want it to be a calming time just because children do go through things. And it's hard for children too. And the fact is that we've had young people go through abuse I mean, we can't even imagine the pain. And oftentimes they feel like it's their fault when it's not. And they need to be, have time to realize that you are a kid. That you need, you deserve to have fun and you deserve to feel to safe. Kid. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Oh, I know how personal creating this room is to Elijah. And we want to help him fulfill his grand vision. So we're hooking him up with four Surface tablets, a 40-inch Vizio TV, and a $1,000 gift card, so he can decorate the room any way he wants. Thank you. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. And Patty, you have a surprise as well, right? I love this kid. 
I saw him before today, oh. and what you're doing is empowering me. Thank and you. what I'm gonna do, you said you're a big old Patty fan, right? Yeah. So I'm coming close to your town in April, and I want you and your family and anybody you wanna bring to come to my show so we can jam. <laughs> Superheroes have to recharge, like Mama said, just be a kid sometimes, you know, at some point, right? So for all the amazing work Elijah does, we want him and his family to have an unforgettable holiday. We're sending them to Jamaica, where they'll enjoy an all-inclusive luxury stay at Moon Palace, Jamaica, and Ocho Rios, courtesy of Moon Palace, Jamaica, and the Jamaica Tourist Board. Yeah! Marvel's Hero Project is streaming exclusively on Disney Plus with all new episodes available every Friday, y'all. I will not stop talking until you subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's right, and I can talk a lot. Seriously, not gonna stop. Yep, still here, not going anywhere. I see you. Don't walk away from this.